So one of the things I'd like to talk about a lot at HVAC school is parts and components that can be used in a lot of different applications. And so that's why we're gonna be doing an unboxing and an installation video on the White Rogers 50M56X-843 integrated furnace control. This integrated furnace control comes with a hot surface igniter and it works in a really wide range of different applications, including PSC and what we would traditionally call X13 or ECMX type motor application. It has a lot of really smart technology built right into the board. We're gonna go over this as we set it up using the White Rogers Connect app or the WR Connect app using near field technology where we actually just take the phone, set it on the board and we can set it up that way. So we're gonna walk through that with you right now. So a couple things to notice right away, just looking at the box, it's for single stage furnaces. So this is for single stage of the actual flame, uh, but it does work with PSC and ECMX blower motors, not fully variable blower motors. So keep that in mind. It is 120 volt hot surface ignition and it comes with the igniter and it services pretty much all OEM brands. If you wanna check the cross reference, you can use the WR mobile app but also on the side of the box, it gives a pretty solid cross reference. So as you can see, one of the first things I've done here is I've pulled open the White Rogers Connect app. And if you have any questions on the actual installation, you can go to the how to install link, which will take you to their really thorough video uh, on their website. This box contains the control, the hot rod universal igniter, mounting screws, mounting standoffs. In some cases you need to mount the board and have it stand off a little bit. Um, spade terminals and an instruction sheet. We got our instruction sheet. We have our 120 volt silicon nitride hot rod igniter from White Rogers. Got all of our separate screws, standoffs and spades. And then we have our control. So one of the most interesting things you can do with this control is connect the control before you even have this energized. And a lot of techs will ask, how is that possible? It's because the energy source is actually coming from the phone device itself, which is pretty interesting. So now we're gonna to connect to the control. You can see it's connected with the control and now we do not have to hold it next to the control. Now we can do auto set. We can set each of the individual parameters ourselves or we can select auto set by putting in the replacement part. So we're gonna go and just select the board that's already in there and it's gonna preset everything to the factory settings, which if we wanted to make a change, we could make that here before we even install the board. And then once we're ready to update the control with this new information, then we hold it up against the board again and we update control. And then it will say control updated. And now this control is configured specifically for the board that we're replacing. Makes it really, really easy. So this circuit board automatically detects what's connected to it. The only thing that you really have to make sure that you set up is the configurations like and the parameters like we've shown. And also you have to give it some information on the specific type of blower motor that's connected. Those are the only uh, two things that you have to do outside of just connecting it up properly and then allowing it to self detect, which we'll show in the installation. Okay, now it's time to get down to the action. I'm the action guy. We're actually gonna install this board. So the uh, universal hot surface igniter integrated control board um, you can install it in more than 550 applications i think is what yeah more than 550 applications um, boards that can be replaced with this board right here and um, that's psc motors or x13 ecm motors uh, as well which is what we have here in this setup so let's just dive right in. I want to install it, see how easy it is to follow the instructions um, and how easy it is for the setup. And then if this is something that's not too difficult for a tech to have and install themselves that you can trust your technicians, then great. You have one option to put on your truck for emergency situations out there that can replace a huge range of boards. That would be great. So. Uh, first step, let's turn off power, or at least confirm that it's off. Power is off. Okay, and uh, let's get straight to it. Our hot surface igniter and our instructions, RTFM, read the fantastic manual, and let's go. Okay, as you've seen, uh, the, the board was already set up. Brian already set the board up, so we're just going to install it. Now, um, you actually have on the box 
a list of applicable part numbers um, that this can actually install with and in the instruction manual. So if you're, if you're ever wondering if it's actually a board that works, check out your board part number and you can find the match under carrier. This is a carrier system, so you can find the part number and you know, you know without a doubt this is actually an exact replacement. Let's go ahead and take this one out. Old board, part number. We actually have a match. This works. Um, whenever you're taking an old board out, it's a good idea to take pictures so that you know where everything was plugged in. Um, but more importantly, to confirm that you actually have like a wire diagram that's visible uh, so you can see where it should go. When you take a picture, you're never really sure if the uh, old board was actually set up properly, right? So you reference your wire diagram to know where the wires uh, should go. First is our mounting. So we have everything needed for a mount in our kit here. We have um, some self-drilling, um, self-tappers in here, and then the uh, standoffs for if there's actually the right place that you can use the standoffs. Okay, board's in place. Okay, so one of the great things I noticed about this is how thorough the uh, instructions actually are. And for your wire diagram that comes with your um, board, you have wires, uh, easy to read and easy to follow, and then each of the um, different components are actually visibly on here. So it's actually just super simple to follow your instructions, which is great. Simple is what we need. We don't mess up as much. All right, so I'm going to start with my transformer. Follow the diagram. Transformer line is line H here at the top. Line H. That's our 120 for our transformer. And then we have our neutral down here on X, F, M, R. This is our neutral column right here. And then our low voltage from our transformer, red and white. We have our red coming around and hooking up to TR or TH for red and TR for blue. And they actually have your different size um, spade terminals. So depending upon the application, um, they actually have both sizes on the board just as a convenience, just to make it easy for us. I think uh, next we will put in our plugs. So on here you have um, a huge range of different uh, OEM style plugs. So we have the 11 pin, the 10, the 10 pin, and then the various plugs here for different board applications. So you actually should be able to plug and play. Um, most of your control wires should just be straight up plug and play um, into the board. And then it has a self-learning system when you power up the board to actually recognize where you've been plugged into and therefore what manufacturer um, setup the board needs to match that. This one's the 11, but it doesn't get much easier than that than actually just having plug and play. Um, same outline as a manufacturer, uh, the <clears throat> OEM where you can't put it in backwards, you can't mess it up. It's foolproof, which is exactly what a guy like me needs. So our inducer, plug and play as well. And then our neutrals. Can all go on our neutral bar. All right, so our line voltage, we have uh, line H, which is line H right here. and then right next to it, our transformer getting power. Fantastic. Um, and then our blower, high voltage, uh, follow the wire diagram. And so for the X13, that is gonna go down here on circle, uh, circulation H, which right now has a cover plate on it. Pull that off. 
and boom. Now our voltage for our blower is hooked up. Okay, so next we are left with our speeds for our X13 module and our uh, low voltage control wire from the thermostat. Okay, so you have on your wire diagram, if it's a, a PCS blower, where the hookups are for that on the top of your board. If it's an X13 uh, ECM style module, then uh, where you're hooking up for that. So super important that you don't get wrong your common. Your module needs common, it needs 24 volts. And so um, the uh, common actually needs to go on the common terminal because it's not one of the speeds. And so I will double check my wire diagram and I can see coming off of my blower motor that common is our green. Then I find common on the board and it's just common, C-O-M. Boom. And now we have our speeds. So you can set up the blower speeds based on what the actual needs are uh, for cooling and heating. Low cool, high cool, heat, fan only, and then we have spare on our board. Where are the spares? Park. So on this board they're called park, not spare. In fact, on all boards they're called park bears for a breaker that's not used. Boom. Now, uh, one of the things that I like about this is the low voltage hookup. You actually have a plug that you can pull off and hook up to your wire and plug back in so you're not trying to get it to fit in at a, a weird or awkward angle. You do have a two-stage setup for cooling only. So on the cooling side, you have your, your Y2, Y1. So if you do have a two-stage condenser hooked up uh, to this furnace, they have a, a low heat, high heat for your blower speed terminals and then a Y1 and Y2. Um, if you're hooking up to a single stage, which is what this one is, then uh, Y, Y2 is uh, what you hook up to. That's all pretty common AC knowledge. So our board is installed and it was honestly a piece of cake. You have on the bottom of the board, we have a digital display that we'll demonstrate once we get power up and we'll make sure this thing actually works. And then up here on the board face, we have our error codes or our run codes. So you actually understand what mode it's in. And then if there's an error that's being pulled, it's right on the face of the board here, um, what that is. So a basic, um, description right on the face of your board. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to worry about that being lost. It's right there. Okay, next, hot surface igniter that comes with the kit. We'll open this up and install it in the system. Um, it's just a great idea to do that whenever you're replacing a board anyway. There are different hot surface igniters that have various, uh, various voltages. You, you could have the 80 volt hot surface igniter or the 120. Um, so they just send you with inside the box. So you have everything you need, one package, 120 volt hot surface igniter. Uh, that's a universal install. Okay, and it does have um, a couple wire nuts in here that are heat resistant. Um, if it's not a plug and play application, this one is plug and play. So I cut the wires and put the wire nuts on for no reason. Classic Burt. All the screws you would need come with the igniter in the box. Secure the new igniter to the harness. Uh, just make sure that when you put this new igniter in that the igniter is actually in the face of the uh, flame stream. So the fuel stream, when the fuel stream um, will come straight out and make contact with the igniter and also that the igniter is not rubbing against any metal. Okay, great. Our uh, board is installed. Our igniter is installed. Um, very straightforward. We've hooked up all our control wires and now it's time to actually fire it up 
and make sure this actually works. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power on. So right initially on power on, the board is gonna go through a sequence of just learning what plug do we have in place so that it can actually match manufacture uh, OEM setup. So whatever the old OEM board's logic and process, sequence of operation, safeties, it'll match that based on the plug that you um, have installed into one of these plugs. And then it, once it goes through that process, I can turn it on. Now we have our call. So on the call for heat, our, ignit our uh, inducer motor comes on. Safety switch proves that it's actually closed after the inducer motor comes on. All of our safeties uh, limits are closed. You hear the click for the igniter. And there's our brand new igniter glowing orange. We are gonna make fire. Next, it will open our gas valve. And boom, we have fire. So if it immediately shuts off, we have a flame sensor issue or um, uh, an issue with our flame sensor wiring. Right now, everything's running great. And one of the cool things about this board is you actually have down here your HE, which is your status for uh, what mode it's in. HE would be heat. But then it also reads the micro amps. And there goes our blower. That's good. We read our uh, microamps on the flame sensor. So right now it's saying uh, 4.5 microamps being sensed on our flame. So yeah, great diagnostic tool. You can walk up and actually see if your flame sensor is, is uh, sensing the flame. Well, there you have it. It was super easy to install. Uh, there wasn't even a lot that I could have messed up. Um, plug and play on the uh, control connections and uh, really straightforward uh, instructions. So this is something you can put on your vans and feel confident that technicians are not gonna be messing this up in the install process. Um, also, there's such a high range of boards that this will actually replace. So White Rogers has made it an effort to develop products that you can put on your van that eliminate carrying a bunch of excess stuff. Uh, and this is no exception to that. This is a great board um, you can have on your van for emergency situations. And uh, so great job, White Rogers. I'm happy with it. It was an easy install. We have flame. Cool. To find out more about this amazing control, go to hvcrschool.com slash WRHSI to get all the information on this particular board. It will take you right there. You can also go to our partners page on White Rogers and find out more information or download the White Rogers mobile app. In addition to the White Rogers Connect app to connect to this control specifically and set it up. So this has been the 50M56X-843 by White Rogers. As you can see, this board is really easy to install and most importantly, it works in a super wide range of applications. So you can put one kit on your truck and technicians can use it to solve a lot of real world problems that technicians run into in the field. Find this integrated furnace control from a quality distributor near you. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to hvacrschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.